Hello, my moonflowers. Welcome to my channel, Moonflower Tarot. So the topic for today is going to be a little bit darker. Um, however, before I start, I do want to state a very quick disclaimer um, that all my videos and tarot readings are ultimately for entertainment purposes only. So my advice is for you to take whatever resonates and leave the rest behind. So the topic for today is what is he or she hiding from you? So what is he or she hiding from you? This is meant to be um, about a romantic partner or someone that you're dating or someone that you have your eye on. Um, however, it can apply to other situations as well. Um, just remember to take whatever resonates and leave the rest behind. Okay, so here we have three piles. One, two, three. Each pile has an earring on top. Um, so pearl earrings, we have three. So I'm going to count down from 10. And that's going to give you 10 seconds to decide between the three piles. So pile one, we have the rose earring with the pearl. Pile two, we have um, another pearl and then some like sparkly tassel earrings. Pile three, we have another pearl earring. Um, and this one has like a little marquee um, design. Okay, so here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five four three two one okay so think about your question take a deep breath what is he she he or she hiding from you so what is he or she hiding from you and if you're unsure you can always pause the video or you can place your finger on the screen and wherever you feel the most heat through your finger on the screen is going to be the pile for you okay so if you've made your choice i'm going to start with pile one and i'm going to move the other two piles out of the way temporarily Okay, so if you've chosen pile one, we've got this uh, sparkly earring here. Um, so what is he or she hiding from you? Let's figure this out. Okay, so let's see. What is he or she hiding from you? What is he or she hiding from you? So for the purpose of ease, I'm going to use uh, the pronoun he throughout the reading. However, you can flip-flop the genders, however it applies to your situation. Um, however, I'm going to be using he just so I don't have to keep saying he or she like over and over again. <laughs> um, and also because um, of demographics, it's just um, more common. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so what is he hiding from you? We have the Ten of Fire. Once again, this is genderless, any gender. We've got Two of Winds. And then we have Six of Fire. Okay. And then bottom, we've got the Five of Fire. Interesting. So overall, what I'm seeing here so far is that he or she is hiding some kind of business deal or something to do with money. So I strongly feel that this person, your person, um, whoever you're asking about might have some financial issues here with a ton of fire financial burden uh, maybe even from i'm not gonna go as far as, as to say gambling but some kind of maybe investment or something that they put money in in their past that might have been a bit of a gamble like maybe they took a risk with an investment with um something like buying something big or this could even be as simple as um just having debt and like not wanting to share that information because you know it's not something that you want to like brag about i suppose which is understandable um with the two of winds this would be two of swords in the traditional tarot yeah they're definitely um hiding this However, I think they're trying to figure out the right time to tell you about it, or maybe they just they're hoping that maybe even if you find out about this, that you that it won't affect you 
um, like your perception of them. But I am seeing here that you guys have had some arguments over finances um, with the five of fire or you've definitely had a bit of heated conversations about money matters. Um, but they don't feel good about hiding this from you at all. Like they're very, they feel very guilty, especially with the ten of fire. They it's stressing them out a lot to hide this information from you so and i think a part of the reason uh why they're hiding this from you is i'm not going to go as far to say they're afraid but they're just like afraid that they're going to look smaller if they tell you like okay i have financial problems or i invested in this and it didn't work out or i have a lot of debt or whatever it is um financial issues that they're struggling with uh, part of the reason why they don't want to share this with you, obviously because it's, you know, it's not something to brag about, but it's partly also because they respect you a lot and they're afraid that if they tell you, come clean with all of this and just tell you everything, um, they're afraid that you're going to think less of them or that... I'm getting that a lot of you guys are very ambitious or competitive or very... Uh, maybe career oriented or just very ambitious people and you guys have won a lot or achieved a lot or done a lot in life that is um, something that you should be proud of and I think that's another reason why this person feels a little bit ashamed or embarrassed to share like whatever happened financially in the past that might have been a bit of a problem. I am strongly getting either a lot of debt or like they gambled with something like an investment or took a risk and it didn't work out or it's like very on shaky ground here and this is something that they're afraid of telling you about um possibly because they're afraid of an argument or they're afraid of um their image being tarnished in your eyes like that's honestly what i'm seeing here um hmm. okay so let's get some more clues about this let's get some more clues Give us some more information here, please, for pile one. So what is he or she hiding? Please give us some more information. Okay, we have the bear. I'm getting that for some of you guys, this person is quite stubborn. Like I said, if this is especially a masculine energy, but you could also be dealing with a feminine energy as well. Once again, this is genderless. But especially if it's a masculine energy with a bear, I'm getting um, this energy of being stubborn and maybe they're afraid to tell you that they either took a risk that didn't work out or gambled the wrong way and it didn't work out because they this person i'm getting that they don't really like to admit when they do something wrong because they have such a maybe it's like their background um it's like this i'm getting a little hint of not maybe not as far as like toxic masculinity or anything but i am getting that maybe um in their background or their upbringing like maybe they grew up with this where the masculine energy isn't supposed to like not necessarily not supposed to say sorry but it's like maybe they feel that they're not supposed to like say something that makes them look um bad or makes them look i guess diminish themselves in any way and they don't really want to do that i'm seeing here we've also got the fox and then we got the cross so with the fox Okay, this person has been taking a lot of great links, maybe even being a bit stealthy to hide this information from you. This could be a big or small deal. Um, it's really going to depend on who you are because this is a general reading. But I don't know why I'm also getting this vision of someone being a risk taker and it's kind of come to bite them in the butt, basically. And... I'm getting also a little bit of like self-sabotage as well on their part and I'm also getting for some reason an image of someone who grew up in an environment where they were told like don't expose your weaknesses, don't make yourself vulnerable, don't reveal information about yourself if it's compromising in any way and I'm also getting something to do with like hiding bank statements. I don't know why, like that's only gonna apply for some of you guys, but I'm getting like hiding bank statements or like not giving you the full disclosure when it comes to like everything that's going on behind the scenes financially. And they're also talking to someone, uh, for a lot of you guys, this is gonna apply. They're talking to someone about financial matters. This could be like, for example, if, um, 
they have a friend who's an accountant or maybe they have um a lawyer this isn't gonna apply to all of you guys um this could even be like maybe um like someone who's a bit of an authority figure like maybe they're even going to the bank and like talking to the bank about something that they're trying to work through and maybe even on the phone um and they don't really want to involve you in it because they don't really want you to be worried and they're also there's this sort of like ego protection thing going on i can see that um this person has a bit of an ego or um they're a bit stubborn um i'm getting a lot of um fire actually i'm getting a lot of aries uh, possibly Sagittarius, Leo, um, I'm also getting, yeah, I'm getting a lot of fire, I'm also getting a lot of water, so Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer as well, and then we got the cross, so yeah, this is something that they really are afraid to tell you because they feel like it's going to, um, burst your bubble like maybe they built up this um image of themselves to you about being very accomplished maybe they're the one who's very ambitious or they have a lot of achievements under their belt a lot of impressive things a lot of trophies a lot of whatever uh like a list of things on their resume whatever it is uh, maybe they're like um, an athlete and they're very like accomplished in whatever field they're in or whatever sport they play and they're afraid that if they share this information with you it's going to knock down your perception of them like a few notches and they're really afraid of that because they want to look good for you um that's what i'm getting so let's get some advice on how to handle this situation i have this giant bag of messages i think this is over like 100 messages so let's try to get some advice please give us some advice for group one uh this isn't fun to be going through uh for those of you who this resonates with so i just want to you know give you a pat on the back for dealing with this because it feels kind of stressful like um if those of you um if this resonates with you i could tell it's kind of a stressful situation okay so oh actually we have you were always the one Okay, so one reason why they don't want to share their financial problems with you or whatever mistakes or mishaps, debt, whatever it is that they have with you is because, yeah, this person admires you a lot and they're afraid that it's going to make them look bad or they're afraid that... I don't know why I'm also hearing they're afraid that you're going to say, I told you so. Like, this is going to apply for some of you guys. Like, maybe this is just um, a small group of you guys. Maybe, for example this person was going to invest in like either some kind of cryptocurrency or um any kind of investment that's just an example or maybe even like gamble or something and maybe you warned them you were like no that's bad news that's risky don't do that and then they ended up doing it anyway this could apply to a lot of you guys as well whatever investment or like they put some money into something or maybe got a loan like took out a loan and you're like no don't tr don't do that that's that's bad news and they ended up doing it and so it ended up not working out or something's not on solid ground it's very shaky so i'm getting here that they don't want to tell you what they did because for some reason i feel like they're afraid of those words um of those four words i told you so they're just like really afraid of that so that's and also they want to impress you they want to they want to i'm getting um feel like the hero and obviously they're afraid like oh if i share this information with um him or her it's gonna not make me look um as good as i'm trying to make myself look for this person because i'm getting that they do really like you they do care about you they do want to look good for you um okay what are these feelings yeah okay so they feel really conflicted i'm getting that this person um they've been really wrestling with guilt they've been well, okay, it's kind of two-sided. I'm getting that this person does have guilt, but I'm also feeling a part of them is like, well, I feel guilty, but at the same time, if I tell him or her, it's going to be worse. It's going to stress um, them out. And so it's like they decided not to tell you after thinking about it for a while. And now they're, I'm getting mostly just trying to hide it with the fox and doing quite well with hiding uh, this information. But um, just know that, you know, it, nothing's black and white. It's not like they, you know, they're doing this to harm you. I mean, that could apply for just like some of you guys, but I'm getting mostly this is for most of you guys, this isn't a black and white situation where they're like hiding this to try to like hurt you or take advantage of you or anything like that um for a lot of you guys for a great majority of you guys it's mostly because they just they don't want to hear i told you so they don't want to look bad 
um, in front of you because they do have feelings for you. So obviously they want to seem like the hero or like they want to seem like they have everything together. Um, even though that's not necessarily the case. Okay, and then we have social masquerade. So I'm getting it for a lot of you guys that this person was raised, like I mentioned earlier, maybe in a background or in a family or upbringing where maybe there was a bit of narcissism or there was a bit of um, keeping up with the Joneses. Keeping up with appearances was really important to this person or maybe this is also something that's sort of important to you as well. Um, but I'm getting it especially with this person. It's just really important that they maintain their image or that they look good to wh whoever they want to look good to and so they're really afraid of this information getting out like especially if like i said if this is someone who's having um financial issues but then like um on social media or whatever like everything looks great like they look like they're doing great financially obviously they don't want to leak this information that they're not doing good or they have debt or they're just struggling financially because it's gonna you know make them look bad it's going to conflict with um, the image that they want to portray I'm getting so hmm wow this is a really uh tricky situation um but I actually have another card I'm going to be pulling you guys an oracle card to get some more advice about this because um the answer hasn't been clear in terms of advice so I want to choose another choose an oracle card to try to get you guys some advice here okay this one's flipped over but obviously Okay, let's actually just choose this one. Okay, so we have returning. So with the returning card, I'm getting that one way you guys may deal with this. Actually, um, let me get the book. I don't want to tell you anything wrong. So I'm going to be kind of official and actually read you a little bit from the book um, when it comes to this oracle. Okay, so... We've got returning 24. Okay, here's some advice about this situation. Okay, so I'm just going to read the last paragraph um, because I don't want to, you know, want you to sit here for too long. Okay, so here we have, don't move too fast as a new momentum is just beginning. This turnaround requires that your energy be recharged by adequate rest so that your life force is not depleted prematurely. This principle of hibernation, of allowing energy to renew itself and be strengthened by rest, applies to many situations, recuperation after an illness, the slow return of trust after a period of estrangement, the careful development of new relationships after the splitting apart of old ones. Okay, some of you guys I'm getting to, you need to, um, not act too fast don't get angry don't do anything crazy or impulsive obviously i mean that's just like basic advice 101 but i'm getting one way you might want to deal with this you guys is calm down okay um what you need to do is you need to take a deep breath and ask yourself what is a deal breaker and what is not a deal breaker for you um and this you can get um, advice from people that you trust people that you know have a lot of experience or wise advice to give However, I'm getting that you need to make the decision yourself, take a deep breath, don't act too fast. Maybe you might even want to spend a little bit of time away from this person to try to figure out what's going on um, before actually confronting them. Like, don't be impulsive and like charge after them and confront them angrily right away, okay? You don't want to be impulsive here. Um, I know you guys might be angry if you feel like this resonates, this might be a possibility, but I'm getting here, um, take a deep breath, think about how to talk about it calmly, but you need to make the ultimate decision like what is a deal breaker for you and what can, how much can you withstand in a relationship um, and this could be romantic friendship um family whatever this applies to work situation um you need to figure out um okay what is an ultimate deal breaker for me and what am i going to put up with and how much and for how long um is this going to be an issue that i will allow in my life because everyone's different and sometimes you know we have um like time limits okay that we put on things and i think sometimes that's good like a time range okay like um how long okay is this going to last that may also be something to take in consideration like is this these financial issues like i know for some people it's like a huge deal breaker so 
you might want to ask yourself like is this really serious like is this something that this person can fix like if it's an issue with let's say gambling or um, chronic risk taking because i know some of you guys um this may be a deal breaker but it depends on how severe the issue is it might not even be as you know um bad or as severe as um, you think it might be so it's good to um, talk to them okay um, and once again this isn't going to apply for all of you so um, don't take it too seriously you know just relax and think about it calmly and talk about it calmly okay uh, for those of you who this does resonate with but you need to start with yourself you need to you know calmly sit with yourself and decide like okay what is a deal breaker for me how long can I put up with this and is this ultimately something that can be fixed and if it can't be fixed, is this something that you can deal with? Um, because for some people, it's a yes. Some people, it's a no. Okay, so um, yeah, ultimately, it comes from the self, I think. Like your decision, basically, um, on how to deal with um, whatever's happening happening externally with this person or otherwise. So like, comment, subscribe, share if this video resonated with you guys. And um, I do want to remind you that I will be doing personal readings um, again um, I will announce when those will be available again um, publicly, so definitely stay on the lookout for that. So I will see you guys later, group one, love and light. Okay, so let's move straight into group two. Okay, so group two. So what is he or she hiding from you? So I think for most of this reading, and you guys have chosen this beautiful um, dangly tassel -y earring, so for most of you guys, this is going to be a he due to demographics. So I will use the pronoun he. However, remember, this is going to be a genderless reading. Um, it's going to be um, genderless. So any gender. Okay, so let's start. So what is he or she hiding from you? So what is he or she hiding from you? And once again, I'll probably use he because I don't want to have to keep saying he or she, obviously. Um, okay, but let's figure this out. Okay, I'm getting into serious mode. So what is he or she hiding from you? So what is he hiding from you? But any gender. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we have the eight of wands. Okay, hmm. Let's pull a couple more. Okay, we have the three of wands. Interesting. Hmm. And then we've got the seven of wands. Oh my God. I don't think I've ever gotten all wands, um, but we've got three wands. So there's a lot of fire here. Okay. Um, I'm getting like passion, sensuality. There's something like that involved in this situation. Okay. It's getting spicy, you guys, but I am getting that. Uh, oh, and bottom of the deck, we have the seven. Okay. Finally, we have something that's not wands um, or fire. So we have seven of coins. Okay. Interesting. Hmm, what's going on here? Let me take a moment, okay, just to observe. Let's see, what is going on? Hmm. Okay, so from this, I'm likely getting that he but once again this is genderless can be hiding the fact that i think this person is a bit afraid i'm just gonna not sugarcoat um because i don't believe in sugarcoating um you know just using fewer words it's easier that way i think um but i am getting that this person might fear that you are with them for the wrong reasons and this is something that they might be hiding from you um, for those of you out there who are feminine energies, especially, but once again, this is genderless, any gender, but I am getting here for those of you, especially who are feminine energies, um, that you might present yourself in a way where you seem like you like nice things, um, or you, you want a lot of things out of life that might be a little bit more on the material level. Um, I'm not saying that you guys are superficial or materialistic, but this person might actually fear that you might be. I'm not saying that this person thinks that you are a gold digger or anything like that, or that you're like super superficial or materialistic, but they, but they fear that you might have a little bit of that, um, 
you know, going on. And so I think that they might be a little afraid that maybe you might be with them for the wrong reasons. Hold on one second. Okay, so this person is a little bit afraid that you might be with them for the wrong reasons I'm getting. And they likely feel that you... They're not afraid that you'll leave them, but a part of them does wonder, like, is she um, satisfied with the life that we have? Like, maybe, okay, for some of you guys, I'm getting that maybe, just maybe, um, some of you guys have friends or you have, like, um, a lot of people in your life who like to who like to share their life like on social media they like to um look good okay on social media and i'm getting here that one thing that they really one thing that they really want to um sorry you guys it was a bug i just it was driving me crazy and i had to uh get rid of it okay but that might actually be a clue. I've never actually had a bug um, enter a tarot reading. So this might actually be a clue that maybe there's someone like telling them something. Okay, I'm getting that maybe there's someone telling them something about you as well. Okay, like the bug, like a pest that what is, um, I'm not going to go as far to say like, oh, they're, um, you know, talking trash about you. But there's someone, I'm getting there's this third party here who might be kind of infecting not infecting uh contaminating um energetically the relationship where or this dynamic where they're saying maybe not that you're a gold digger but maybe like i said you have really high standards and i'm getting you know a lot of people or you have a lot of people in your life who might share a lot on social media or like for example some of you guys might have a sister or a best friend who lives a very I wouldn't go as far to say luxurious, but, you know, like pretty well, um, or maybe even beyond their means, or they live in a way that's comfortable, you know, like maybe they're always getting, um, you know, going to the salon, going on vacations, like maybe um, spending money on like lavish cars, maybe always getting lavish gifts from their partner. Um, like, for example, some of you guys might have a sister or a best friend who, um, whose husband or um, boyfriend like always buys them like really expensive things um like for no reason and i feel that um your partner feels a little bit of pressure and once again this is genderless so you can um, flip the genders however it applies to your situation but i'm getting that this person feels intimidated they're a little afraid that you might leave them if you meet someone better because you are very attractive group too i'm getting a lot of um for some reason, I'm getting a lot of Taurus, Libra, or Pisces in your astrology. Or possibly Capricorn. So Capricorn, Taurus, um, Libra, or Pisces in your astrology. And you're very beautiful. Um, you guys might even have Sagittarius in your chart as well, or Leo. But I'm getting here that... They're intimidated. Like maybe you guys are surrounded by people a lot, like um, people who are attracted to you or who are attractive. So this person feels a little bit afraid that you might leave them for someone. Um, I want to go as far to say better, obviously, because that's very subjective. Like better isn't going to mean the same thing for everyone. Um, but I am going to hear that. Yeah, I mean, this person is afraid that if somebody who can offer you a more comfortable life comes along, they're afraid that you might leave them and that you might basically end up end up with someone else, basically who can give you the life that maybe they see you looking at social media and like you look at celebrities and stuff and they live like really lavish lifestyles. <clears throat> Sometimes I'm getting like, you know, really expensive, like thousands of dollars for like, um, like a dress or something. Um, and they see you looking at this on social media or they see like your best friend or your sister who's living this life and they just feel like, oh my god, like 
is she going to leave me if someone better comes along who can give her that same thing? Um, so I'm getting this is what they're hiding from you. Um, but let's get some more clues here. Sorry about that bug, you guys, from earlier. It was just driving me crazy. I had to get rid of it. Um, but like I said, there might be a pest of some kind energetically who's talking in their ear about you. Like, But we're going to figure that out as well. Let's try to get some clues about that too. But um, okay, let's see what's going on here. So we have, yep, we have the mouse. There's someone around them um, who would benefit from your breakup this could be oh actually you know what look at this um this could be an ex of theirs this could be like a friend who's um female who has their eye on your person um and she might be telling them this could also be like a male friend as well um like their best friend or maybe not their best friend but i'm getting because this isn't like this is someone kind of in the background it's not like their best friend or like someone that they like they're super close to this is just like someone talking in their ear like a little mouse but i'm getting here that this mouse energy is telling your person that okay like maybe you expect too much maybe you guys are incompatible because you have high standards for yourself that this person might not be able to afford okay that kind of lifestyle for you um but i am getting here that this mouse likely like i said is a feminine energy like maybe an ex that they're still friends with maybe a really good friend who's female who has a crush on your person and I'm also getting that they might have like brown, light brown hair is what I'm getting. Like light brown hair or like brownish hair that um, maybe they have bangs, maybe they have glasses. They've got like a mousy look, okay? And, hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's get some more information. Let's get some more information here. Okay, so we actually got two that popped out. Okay, so we got the flowers and then we got the key. So I'm getting here that this person feels like they're not good enough for you with the flowers. Like they honestly feel afraid that they're not going to be able to measure up to your standards. Like for example, like if you went to a wedding recently or if you went to... Um, you know, this could even be like a virtual, uh, social gathering given the times of COVID and everything, or even, um, any kind of like public event. I'm getting that maybe, um, they felt the pressure from this event for whatever reason. Like maybe there was something really lavish going on. Maybe there was a lot of, um, there could have been a lot of like money being spent or a lot of just a lot of stuff going on here that made them feel insecure like they couldn't afford the lifestyle that was going on at this event or public gathering um or like i said this could even be like you got together with some friends and like the friends were you know like for example like that i used earlier like your sister or your best friend like maybe you guys went out for um drinks or you went out to eat dinner or like a dinner party and you know, they were talking about, like, your sister and her partner, your best friend and her partner, whatever it is, were talking about, like, oh, we just, you know, went on this cruise to, um, you know, or we went on this trip to South Africa, and it was, like, really lavish, and everything was so expensive. I mean, obviously, they're not going to say it like that, but it was kind of, you know, basically t telling you that, but in, like, a roundabout way, that it was very expensive, it was really difficult to afford, and they have this income bracket they live in an income bracket that's not accessible for most people and i'm getting that your person felt a little intimidated they were like oh no now i have to measure up to that kind of lifestyle um <laughs> and or maybe even this could have been like you know like jewelry that um like your best friend or your sister um like their partner bought them like this piece of jewelry that was like really really pricey um possibly even you know like tiffany is you know like limited ed edition or whatever it is or like a luxury bag that was like limited edition or just like really expensive um like a birkin or something like that and or you know hermes and your person um either heard you talking to your friend or sister on the phone about this or maybe you you know you were doing like a virtual chat or something um 
and like they heard about it and they just felt really intimidated by this they were like oh my god i'm never gonna be able to afford you know regular on the regular like um like those kind of luxury um like tiffany jewelry and like broken bags or hermes like for her so how am i gonna measure up like they feel very intimidated and you know it's funny i'm like imagining all these things happening but i'm getting that it happens for quite a few people out there um who are watching this or has happened um at least in the past for sure and with the seven of wands and the key i'm getting that This person feels a little bit afraid to open up about this. They, with the Seven of Wands, it's about resistance and then we got the key. So I'm getting that they feel afraid to open up about this because it's gonna make them feel small, obviously. It's gonna make them feel, it's difficult to, you know, especially if they're masculine energy, they're not gonna like just say this because it's not something that is gonna make them feel like, um, like a hero or like someone that, you know, is, very masculine i'm getting that um they you know there's nothing wrong with opening up and like talking about their feelings but i'm getting that they're a little embarrassed which is understandable i mean they shouldn't be but you know what can you do it's like our culture in general society in general um you know masculine energies a lot of a lot of the time they're not going to come out and say like your friends or you know your sister like they live this really lavish lifestyle and i can't keep up with that it makes me feel small or like less than or something like they're not going to just like say that but i'm getting that um they they're having a hard time opening up about this for sure okay so let's get some clues some more clues that might shed some more information um when it comes to a solution here because I'm getting that this is stressing this person out. And then we have also this little mouse that is talking in this person's ear about you're not being compatible and blah, blah, blah. Are you too different because you expect different things out of life? Um, and yeah, this is someone who likely has an eye on your person. This could also be their um, mother as well or like some kind of feminine energy in their life. Mother, um, sister, something like that. or And I'm getting, or, but likely mostly an ex or like a female friend who has their eye on them um or some kind of control issues is also what i'm getting like they would benefit from you breaking up in some way due to them having some kind of control issues i don't know why that's what i'm getting over your person okay so let's get a clue here okay so we have you are the change that you seek so i'm getting here that if you feel for those of you who this resonates with you you might do well by just talking to your person about the situation like you know don't like confront them or anything obviously but you might want to talk to them you know just talk to them um you know maybe just ask them one random question see if they bite you know kind of like throwing bait to fish um see if they nibble if they want to open up great if they don't then you can always approach it a different way let's try to get more clues but once again you want to maybe reassure them okay like maybe for those of you who this resonates with and you feel bad about this or you know obviously you shouldn't feel bad they, no one should feel bad in this situation i'm getting you know it's just you know circumstance like sometimes people end up together when you know they come from different socioeconomic backgrounds or you know different expectations or maybe just like different life circumstances but that doesn't mean that it's doomed or that it's not meant to be you know like some people might insinuate here um with this mouse person in the background see um but okay let's get some more information here so i'm just going to use these cards to try to get some advice okay some advice here in general um, but reassurance might be key or just letting them know that they're enough and that you aren't going anywhere you're not with them because you're out for something like they're you know out for a certain lifestyle or you know anything like that i think reassurance and just like opening your heart to them might be um the key to open you know their heart and get them to be vulnerable about whatever you know if this is bothering them okay okay so we've got conflict okay as the uh something to do with the solution okay i'm gonna read from the book because i don't want to tell you anything wrong here so let's see conflict okay interesting i wonder why the conflict card came out let's see hmm Maybe there's just a need to talk about this, like really talk about it. I mean, like sit down and, you know, have a talk about it. Maybe, you know, for those of you who are drinking age and, you know, drinking is 
not a problem <clears throat> excuse me for you maybe over like a glass of wine or something obviously if you're okay with that and you don't have any like um health problems with drinking and legal age and also if you know you're not re like recovering from alcoholism i'm just throwing out all the possibilities okay um okay so here we have conflict so i'm just gonna read you the last paragraph because i don't want to you know i don't want you sitting here all day so here we have the last um uh, paragraph of conflict in times of conflict and turmoil new adventures and new initiatives should be avoided instead examine the sincerity of your current beliefs and the beliefs of those around you Seek advice or arbitration from an impartial and mature person. Consider everything carefully before making any major decisions. Consider the option of compromise. Clarify the roles and responsibilities of those with whom you live and work to reduce conflict in the future. Okay, so I'm getting a strong need for you guys to actually have a strong... Um, why did I say strong? Um, like, <laughs> like a calm moment with yourself okay first before approaching this person which is interesting it kind of reminded me of pile one as well um but you might want to have like a sit down with yourself and ask yourself like what do i expect from a partnership or relationship like what am i going to want to eventually like you know be involved with for not necessarily the rest of your life but i'm saying like if you were to you know say okay this is going to be for the rest of my life um this is just you know uh hypothetically um in a hypothetical sense like is this going to work for you what's not going to work for you what are you really looking for and also have a look at the person that you're seeing as well that you're asking this question about like you know does their lifestyle match up with your lifestyle like is this going to be drive a wedge is this like a problem that will be able to be fixed or not i mean there's a reason um that people you know not necessarily have conflicts but you know sit down and hash things out and really have deep conversations some of you guys might even want to seek couple counseling excuse me couples counseling if this gets you know to be like a real problem or if this third party um ends up kind of driving a wedge here uh i don't know who this is but i'm getting that it's not anything major because they are kind of in the background here but i am getting that there's a need to um talk to each other instead of like necessarily just people outside of the relationship about issues like this and um to also yes um if you are going to talk to someone seek advice from people that you trust who are um who can mentor you like someone older like i'm talking like um maybe your mother or like your father or like your grandmother or, like fa uh, grandfather someone who has been there done that and you can trust okay with this information who's going to give you like honest advice that you can trust um and once again i do recommend maybe couples counseling if this you feel is a real problem that's like making things um, uncomfortable or like driving a wedge um before you know like a third party actually um, you know, like the little mouse that I mentioned, um, ends up interfering too much because we don't want that happening, um, you know, and ruining a perfectly good thing. Um, but yeah, like I, we got the conflict card. So you guys may want to figure out a way to, to, <clears throat> to talk it out, to hash it out. That's what I recommend honestly and openly and not in a way that's accusatory or that's going to like diminish the other person and vice versa. Okay. So, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share if this video resonated with you guys group too. And I do want to remind you that I will be doing personal readings again, and I will announce when those will be public and I'll announce, um, all the services that I will be offering publicly. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys later. Love and light group two. So I'm going to move straight into group three. Okay. Last but not least, we got group three. We have this deck here and then we have this pearl. I think that's like a marquee design earring here. Um, it's really, really cute. I'm trying to get it close up because I just want to show you. Okay. There we go. This is the item that you've chosen. Okay. So let's try to get some information here on on what uh, is this person hiding from you? I'm gonna use the pronoun he just so that we can make it less confusing because we don't want to um, involve you know too many pronouns. So I'm just gonna use he for convenience. But like I said, this is genderless, so you can flip the genders however it applies to your situation. Okay, so what is this person hiding from you? This one was peeking out from earlier. Okay, so we got the chariot. Okay. 
We've got the Empress, okay. And then this one, let's see. We got Warrior of Swords, interesting. Okay, and then bottom of the deck, we've got the Seven of Swords. Ooh, okay, we got the Seven of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Okay, let's try to figure out what's going on here. Okay, so what is this person hiding from you? Okay, uh, for some of you guys, I'm getting that this person, likely a masculine energy, but once again, this is any gender, however it applies to your situation. This person is feeling a little bit of indecision when it comes to settling down like maybe this person does really like you okay they feel a sense of i'm getting they feel a sense of loyalty to you um strong loyalty okay and that's why they're so torn because if they didn't feel loyalty to you if they didn't feel like they need to honor you obviously they would just you know decide not to keep going uh with the dynamic but they do really care about you okay um, but they do feel a little bit torn about really settling down with you in the long run. And I mean, like, they feel doubtful of, like, do I really want to tie the knot with this person? Do I really want to settle down? Do I really want to share my life, my finances, and ultimately children with this person? Because, you know, being with someone is one thing, but then, you know, all of those other things that require a lot of responsibilities and a lot of, like, major like milestones in life that can be very, quite stressful and demanding um they're a little worried like is this something i can weather with this person and this could even just be like they're doubting themselves too like they're thinking like am i someone who can really like provide for a family am i someone who can potentially take care of a partner other than myself like can i really like settle down in one place like all of these questions i think this person is really it's kind of tearing them apart. I'm getting that this person's really stressed about this. And some of you guys might have been feeling the distance lately. This could even be someone that you've been with for quite a while, but it's been bothering them for a while, for a really long time. I'm getting, for a lot of you guys, this is the past seven months, maybe even seven days, seven weeks. But I'm getting for a lot of you guys, this is going to range anywhere from seven days to seven months. This has been really bothering this person. And especially with the Empress card, there's something to do with sharing, like settling down, sharing finances because, you know, okay, some of you guys have Taurus in your astrology, Capricorn, Virgo, or this person does. Also Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio is coming through. Also Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. But I'm really more so getting um, Earth and... Um, water for some reason i'm getting a lot of earth so taurus capricorn virgo but i am definitely getting that yeah this person is wondering like can i share children with this person finances um can i pay the mortgage with this person you know provide for this person you know all those like serious things that people don't really like to think about um, in partnerships, but it's been bothering this person and this could be, you know, either all of those things or just one of those things that I listed just now, but this is something that's been bothering them for a while. And with a warrior of swords, uh, excuse me, warrior, I don't know why I said warrior of swords, warrior of swords. This could be for some of you guys, this is really going to be, this is like a major point, um, in your partnership where, they yeah with warrior of swords this is the king of swords in the traditional tarot they've been thinking about breaking up possibly um or just not a, okay i don't want you to panic i don't think it's necessarily like oh i want to break up right away but they've been just entertaining the possibility of or thinking about it they've been thinking about like can i you know with the chariot we have um two uh sides that they've been thinking of constantly and it's been sort of like the seeds have been planted and like it's been really stressing them out i'm getting um sleepless nights i'm getting guilt i'm getting a lot of guilt okay from this person uh, from this person's end i'm getting that maybe they've been even confiding in someone else outside of the relationship this isn't for all of you don't panic this is only for some of you and that's been making them feel guilty as well um 
this isn't like necessarily that they're cheating okay that's not what i'm saying um i'm saying like they might be like seeking advice or counsel from someone outside of the relationship for those of you who are married this might even just be like legal advice from like maybe their friend who's a lawyer like an attorney or something um but obviously this is only for a small minority view but i am definitely getting this person is torn it has ultimately to do mostly with you know sharing a house settling down tying the knot or sharing children one of those things or all of those things um, can apply here in the situation and they have thought about unfortunately ending the situation with the king of swords that's about endings that's about someone who at first i think they're really really torn and there was a lot of guilt and they still do feel bad they have a lot of guilt for like going back and forth while maybe you might have no idea or you might they might be like telling you what you want to hear and stuff but inside they're very torn and they feel guilty but i am getting at this point they're quite detached um, i'm just going to give it to you straight with the warrior of swords because this is the king of swords it's detached logical um or at least in the future, that's the direction it's gonna go. So if I were you, group three, um, and this is just for those of you who this resonates with because this isn't gonna resonate with everyone, but if this is resonating for you so far, or you feel in your intuition that this is the reading for you, I recommend um, thinking about your options. Like, I recommend thinking about yourself, okay, for now. I'm not saying like be selfish, but maybe thinking about like, okay, well, what would happen if this person wanted to break up? Like what options do I have outside of this relationship? Because I'm getting for a lot of you guys, you have a lot going on um, outside of the relationship or you have a lot more advantages and you have more going on in life or more of a life outside of this partnership than you think. And I'm not saying that you don't need this person, but I'm getting here group three that if you were to break up with this person i'm not saying that you're going to or that you have to but if you were to um that you have more than enough going on in life that you will be you can be happy obviously that's anyone out there this is anyone you know after a breakup anyone has the tools to be happy again okay and this is for anyone this this isn't just for this pile this is like any human i'm saying like anyone has the ability to like pick up the pieces and move on after a breakup a divorce whatever it is um so just just calm down and just you know i'm getting here relax for now okay don't panic with well, the seven of swords I'm also getting for a good chunk of you, um, those of you that, excuse me, those of you who have an inkling that your partner or maybe even yourself, like you're kind of headed towards divorce or you've thought about divorce or you've talked about differences in the relationship that could potentially lead to divorce. Um, I'm not saying you need to lawyer up or anything, but you may want to do some research, okay, when it comes to what would happen if that were the case if a divorce were to happen or if a breakup were to happen like those of you guys who are let's say living together and like um you know sharing joint accounts or like sharing something um there's a need to just think about it for a second it's not necessarily to, to prepare yourself for a breakup but it's just to you know think more independently you know like maybe even there's a problem with codependency here with a chariot and that codependency is now starting to I'm not going to go as far to say like feel a bit old or tired, but I'm getting some of you guys are a little bit tired. Maybe it's you guys as well. Like this could even be like your subconscious telling you like you're tired of being like in this partnership that may not necessarily be working. But on the flip side, on the positive side, I'm getting that for some of you guys, this can work, but it's going to require a lot okay it's gonna require i mean a lot of relationships are hard work but this is really has a lot to deal with what you're willing to put up with like that's different for everyone so what can and can't you deal with because that's going to be different and it's going to require maybe even couples counseling um down the road it's going to require i don't know why you guys for some reason even before continuing i get this um vibe or energy of you being you both in this partnership of going back and forth from being really selfish to codependent so it's like this swinging pendulum of like okay you're really selfish you're really independent and then suddenly you're like super codependent and you're like super like can't live without each other and then something happens and then that changes again where you're like detached and i'm getting that this happens periodically for some reason i'm getting for some of you guys 
I don't know why I'm envisioning like you you or this person like went out with your friends in the city um somewhere crowded and at one point you thought like okay what if i was single i don't know why that's coming through i'm also getting that some of you guys are secretly sort of wanting more in life you're kind of i think some of you guys are already sort of done with this i'm not saying all of you guys are but some of you guys are sort of ready to, if not move on from this, like move on with your life to like start something new, like a new journey in life, a new career even. And so that might be something that is making you both, or maybe it's this person who's trying to start something new in life and that's putting a lot of strain, okay? That could be the case as well. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so we have the cross. So for some of you guys, religion is also a factor that might be an issue or like very traditional values. Like maybe you have really traditional values. Maybe your person has, they have really traditional values. And so that's getting in the way. I'm getting maybe faith, like maybe they've even mentioned, okay, like, do you want to convert to XYZ religion? Or maybe you need them to convert to whatever religion you are and maybe in the past you thought oh it's not a big deal like doesn't matter but then you know down the road you start thinking about okay when i have children and then when i like really settle down with this person like what if the religion thing is an actual issue and it's becoming a thing that you now have to really think about and now you're sort of like wrestling with it like is this something i want to go through with okay and then we have the key so one thing that i'm getting for you guys is when you were out having fun without this person um thinking about the potential that your life held like what is it that you caught yourself fantasizing about when it comes and i don't mean like you know in a steamy sense but i mean like fantasizing as in like about potential like future possibilities like was this person in the picture like when you were thinking about this or was this not necessary like what is this um fantasy where you were thinking about envisioning this beautiful future was it just you um or was it did was this person there because it's something that i'm getting you really need to think about also when it comes to dreams like when you're dreaming about something and you're having this really beautiful pleasant dream is this person in the dream or is it just you and like other people or are they even involved you know what i mean like this is something that and also i'm getting here let's take the other picture person out of the picture for a second especially with the empress and the key so for those of you i don't know what it is you guys want to grow in life or where you see yourself and let's say like you know when you're old and wrinkly um you know even i'm not saying like okay you have to think of ahead like 30 30 years but um let's start with three years so in the next like three years let's say like five years, okay? Like just an average of five years. It's like, where do you see yourself? Like, where do you see yourself living? What kind of lifestyle? What kind of partnership do you ultimately see yourself in? Because this is something that I'm getting you need to ask yourself. Like, does it align with this individual that you're asking about? Like, is this someone who can really give you that? Because this is something that you need to make a choice now because you don't want to be thinking about this like three years down the road and then you're like oh my god three years have passed and then you have to like start over you know what i mean so um i'm not trying to like push anyone because this is obviously going to apply for some people and not for others but i'm getting here this is something that you need to sit down and ask yourself first before even bringing the other person in the equation because this could be this person right now but in the future you could be asking about somebody else but ultimately i think the most important thing is what do you want and what do you really want because i'm saying like life is very short but it's also very long so it's like if you feel like you're with someone who you don't feel compatible with when it comes to like what you really really want um out of life um lifestyle habits whatever it is in the long run like for example the next 30 years like do you really want to be doing what you're doing with the same person for the next 30 years or even the next five years especially if you're thinking about upgrading your life or like starting something new in your life like you need to like maybe think about this and it's not necessarily a negative situation, you know, it could be as simple as incompatibility and it happens to everyone. I mean, there's a thing where, um, 
you know, people say you can't be friends with exes, but I think that you can have like a friendly relationship, especially if you have children together, like you have to, you know, maintain a cordial relationship with them, right? So I'm just saying like, there's so many things to think about. Okay, and then here we have the lilies. Oh my God, speaking of the next 30 years, we have um, 30 and then we have the lilies. So this person has been thinking these exact same thoughts I'm getting for a lot of you guys. This is going to apply here. This person has been thinking themselves about, about, okay, can I um, spend the next 30 years with this person like are we ultimately compatible and this is the thing that i think they've been thinking about for a while and at first they were guilty like you know oh my gosh how am i um you know even thinking about this or doubting what we have but i'm getting now they're gotten to the stage where they're heading or in the future to be a bit more detached about this so i recommend um thinking about it logically because why not like why you know people really do um, place an importance on thinking with your or not thinking with your heart but um, putting your heart above your head and okay that's understandable like that does apply in some situations but when it comes to like something as serious as incompatibility when it comes to lifestyle like let's say um child rearing settling down um, sharing finances buying a house together and deciding where to live even or the kind of lifestyle you want like for the next 30 years for example this is something that i think needs to be thought with um through like a logical perspective it needs to be first you think with the mind and if it matches up in your mind then I think it's good in these type of situations to move on to the heart, okay? So first you have to, you know, get the basics with your mind. And then once you feel like, okay, everything matches up in terms of the bare minimum, then you can move on to your heart and think, okay, like, is this someone that I really feel connected to with my heart? But first, obviously you need the basics. Like for example, like if you're trying to build a house, you need like a basic blueprint, right? That works. You can't just like jump straight into like, oh, I'm just gonna like build random stuff without any kind of like basic um, foundation that works. You know, you need a little bit of structure um, as like a bare skeleton before building on top of that structure or else it's just, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be a shaky foundation and that's not safe. Um, and you don't want that for you, like three, five, 30, whatever, you know, how many years down the road, 10 to 30 years down the road um, when you have, you know, maybe by then you'll have kids or you'll be, you know, obviously quite a bit older, okay? And, you know, I'm not saying like that's bad. I'm just saying, you know, if you had a choice, like would you maybe try to find something compatible now or you know at least within the next few years or will you wait um 30 years because there's some people who do wait for 30 years and you know it happens you don't want to blame anyone for the choices that they make okay so here's some more clues here we've got an ocean of possibilities so yeah i think a lot of you guys need to think about like the fact that there are billions of people on this earth um you know there are so many not saying like drown yourself in options, but there are a lot of options, so many options. And sometimes I think that some people tend to cling to things because they feel like a scarcity mindset where they feel like I'm not good enough or, you know, I can't find someone better than, you know, maybe someone who's even, you know, dishonest. I'm not saying that this person is dishonest, but I'm getting with the seven of swords that if you are seeing someone who you know is dishonest or who's flaky or who is hot and cold or whatever it is with their energies or, you know, their um, affections or whatever it is, like, I think you need to really think about the ocean of possibilities out there and there's going to be a lot of people who tell you like, oh, like you're getting old or like, you know, so-and-so is so good to you though. And they don't like know everything that's going on behind the scenes, but you need to trust your own intuition. Like, is this person really good for me though? Or, you know, do I need time? Because I'm not saying life is forever, um, but when you need time, you need time. And I'm also getting that, would you rather waste time with someone that you're unsure about until like way later and you're like, okay, um, you know, the straw broke the camel's back, um, 
and now I'm gonna finally look for something new that actually fits my needs and only you can answer that like you don't need other people like telling you like this is as good as it you're gonna get like this person is really great like what's wrong with them you know because I'm seeing here that you know it's up to you to really make that choice like you can't let other people like tell you that you should be happy with something that you just don't feel happy with because at the end of the day like when you leave this earth, you're leaving this earth alone. Um, I'm not trying to like be bleak or um, overly Saturnian or anything. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a lot of Saturn in my astrology. Um, okay, and then we have cloud nine. So yeah, I'm getting that some of you guys are happier when you're considering possibilities rather than when you're actually with this person. It's almost like some of you guys are, you get like drunk on the... Um, the either the perception or the image of this person that may or may not actually be true or whatever you you have like i'm getting a lot of you guys like fantasize about something you know or you envision that you are living a life with this person that isn't necessarily like totally aligned with the reality i'm getting maybe for some of you guys, there was a little bit of dishonesty here with the Seven of Swords because that is, I'm not going to sugarcoat, Seven of Swords is all about dishonesty, um, taking advantage. So whether you're doing that or this person is doing that, I am getting, there's a need to actually face the truth. And if the truth is great, like for example, this could be positive for some of you guys, like maybe the truth is that this person makes you feel like you can do anything. Um, like there is an ocean of possibilities before you and maybe this person takes you on cloud nine um, from a genuine place where you feel supported, okay, in life. So that could also be the case for some of you guys, but with seven of swords, I am getting there is some conflict. Okay, and then we have words of wisdom. There's... Like I said, a need to maybe um, seek couples counseling, maybe talk to someone who's a lot older and wiser than you, um, possibly even someone who you know um, can really help you, okay, that you trust, like possibly um, like a mother, a grandmother, father, grandfather, um, someone older, maybe even like an older sibling or like an older like aunt who you know is really wise and she, you know, has been married for like, you know, 30 years or something, you know, whatever the case is, like, you should seek out, um, advice. Actually, let me leave these out so you can, like, see, uh, but I'm gonna be shuffling another oracle card to try to get some advice. So if I can give you some advice from these oracle cards, for those of you who this resonates with so far, let's try to get some, I'm gonna pull two, actually, because both of them are sort of jumping out at me. Okay, so here we have joy, and then we have the well. Okay, we have joy, we have the well. Let's pull a third one, why not? Something's telling me to pull a third one. Okay, and then we have returning, which we actually got earlier for, I believe it was pile two. I think we got the returning card, so you may want to um, look that up. But I am getting here for a good chunk of you guys that... Okay, let me actually read from the book. I'm going to read from the well because this is the one in the middle. So let's see. Let's try to get some more advice here. Okay, so we have the well. Okay, I'm going to read you the last paragraph because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Okay, so we have the well. Beware of shallow thinking. The image of the well suggests that going further within produces greater clarity. Be patient and you will penetrate your problems and your own nature as deeply as you can. Self-development is key to reaching down to tap the clear water. If you do not lower your bucket into the depths, you're likely to come up empty. Remember, when greater depth is sought, lessening the speed of normal operations may be required. A shallow carelessness in the process of meeting deeper needs can be self-defeating or even dangerous. Okay, so like I said, you guys need to really think deep about this. If your intuition is telling you that something is off, like even if this person uh, makes you feel happy, like on the surface, like maybe um, you post a lot on social media. And I know this is like a thing that a lot of people do. Like sometimes if there's issues, they'll just like patch it up with like pictures on social media and then make everything look perfect again. Um, but there's a need to 
really align yourself with like, am I really happy in this? Like, it, you know, is my intuition telling me that something is off? Or on the flip side, is everything okay? If your intuition is honestly telling you everything is okay, then it is. Um, but yeah, I'm getting here a need to really talk things out if there's an issue. And like I said, think about things more deeply than just like the idea of this dynamic or like whatever you feel um, is on the surface, okay? You need to go under the surface and really listen to your intuition and not just what others tell you or what you feel like is expected of you or what you feel like people perceive because I'm getting that sometimes what people perceive can be totally different from what's going on um, behind closed doors is definitely what I'm getting here. So what's going behind what's going on behind your closed doors is what I'm getting to ask yourself because this is something that you need to think about because I'm getting something like coming up from the surface. Um, there is joy, but I am also getting like there's a draw there's a well here that you need to go deeper, okay? You need to go deeper and really think about this is almost like an investment. Like if if this is an investment, for example, for those of you guys um, who this, you know, are earth signs, Capricorn, uh, Taurus, Virgo, especially this is going to, uh, going to apply. Like if I invest in this partnership, like this is something you need to ask yourself, is it going to be worth um, the return, okay, on investment in the next 30 years okay like when you're old and wrinkly like are you gonna look back and think like ooh, should i have maybe uh explored other options because like i said there's like billions of other people out there or are, do you know in your heart in your mind especially too in your mind um in 30 years like is, i mean am i gonna be satisfied with this and you need to ask yourself because if you have been sort of like patching things up on the surface, pretending everything's okay, that can only go for so long. Eventually it will start showing up in other places because I'm seeing here that for this person, it's already, it's already for this other person, This, if this resonates with you, I'm getting that they've been there and done that and they're already sort of detached from the situation with the warrior of swords. It's all about detachment. Um, they already feel detached from this for some reason. And you need to talk to them if you can, um, because I am seeing here that, yeah, it's been bothering them. It's been bothering you, but I'm getting for some reason like this lack of communication. It's like maybe even, like I said, this um, swinging, swinging pendulum that I mentioned earlier of codependency and detachment, like you're like codependent and then you're detached, you know, it's like opposite ends of the spectrum going back and forth and getting some of you guys, you might be together a lot, but you don't talk for some reason is what I'm getting. Like that's a problem. Like you're always together, but you don't talk or you're always in the same house or place like dwelling place, but you're in like separate rooms all the time. Or I'm also getting like separate bedrooms. I'm also getting something to do with like being so close physically but like so apart like on an emotional or mental level it's very very strange so that's something that you need to consider okay so like comment subscribe share if this resonated with you guys and i do want to remind you that i will be doing personal readings again um however i will announce when um or what services are going to be available and i'll announce that publicly so i will see you guys later i hope this was helpful insightful and um, once again, this is going to resonate for some of you, not all of you. I just want you to keep that in mind. So I will see you guys later. Love and light.